can't do it anymore, Bren. What? Keep turning up here. Coming in here, taking my coat off, having a brew, phoning up other brain dead pillocks about salad cream. <sighs> every day, Bren, every day's the same. No, it isn't. Well, to me it is. Norman will be in in a minute, blowing his nose all over me French sticks. <laughs> Telling me all about his agoraphobia. Fell off a diving board in Guernsey. <laughs> I know you did. Pity they hadn't drained the flaming pool. <laughs> Dolly and Jean will be coming in, wittering on about shower curtains and acker bloody bilk and menopausal malt loaf or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> no, it's that new bread for premenstrual tension. <laughs> it would be. We could serve it here. Mind you, I wouldn't like to be behind the counter when it runs out. Where is it? <laughs> anyway, that new girl's starting today, Christine. Well, I can't wait to hear what she's got to say for herself. I wonder if she's ever bought a white sliced loaf and when she got it home, it was brown. <laughs> can't wait. Well, that's part of coming to work, isn't it? People talking rubbish. Well, I can't take it. Well, sorry, that's the trouble with kitchens. They're full of people like me. Oh, I didn't mean you, mate. It's just January. It gets me down, sorry. It's all right. Hey, here's a bit of excitement. It's Glenda and Norman. This is a blooming radical departure already. Hey, oh, what's happening? Don't tell me this is a Gretna Green scenario. Don't ask. I've developed a phobia. Yeah, we know, agoraphobia. No, I'm living with agoraphobia. That's a day-to-day -day minefield, is that? I fell off a diving board in Guernsey. <laughs> no, did you? No, this is a new one. Happened Friday, didn't it, Glenn? What's your new phobia then, Norman? Fear of bread. <laughs> Bit of a drawback for a bread man. <laughs> it was just loaves Friday. I thought I'll give it the weekend. Took it easy, stuck to cream crackers. <laughs> Went into work this morning, it was worse. It had spread right across the whole baked range. <laughs> Crumpets, tea cakes. I couldn't touch them. I was sweating, wasn't I, Glenn? Oh, he was sweating. Coming in the van, he had to sit on the Bolton Evening News. I never read it, but boy, it's absorbent. <laughs> So what's Glenda for then, Norm? She talks me through it. It's a muffin, Norman. It's a yeast-activated bakery item. It holds no power. <laughs> Interesting then, Glenda, in counselling bread-based panickers? No, but I've gone camping a lot with Methodists. You pick it up. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have to sit in the van. I'll let me eyes straight to those pitters. See you tomorrow. Do you think he's all right? He's all right. I'm the one with post-operative discomfort. Oh, how is it? Well, you know your cervix is supposed to feel like the tip of your nose. That's me, don't... <laughs> Men mithering over muffins I can cope with, but cervix is first thing on a Monday morning. It's definitely fag time. What's first thing on a Monday morning? Cervixes. Motorway services. <laughs> They're opening a new one near Mobley. No, this is at the top of my uterus. <laughs> We've missed something, Dolly. <laughs> They're never opening a new motorway services at the top of Glenda's uterus. <laughs> They've told me to stand on my head at the hospital. Why, does that, like, take the pressure off your bits? Or something? <laughs> well, it might do, but your bust goes up your nose and that's stressful in itself. <laughs> See ya. See you, Glenn. Is Christine here yet? No, but it's only early. Did you meet a dolly when she came to see Tony? Oh, yes, we had quite a chat. She's a very interesting person. Quite spiritual. She's fascinated by what she calls the city beyond the shining water. Halifax. <laughs> Did you have a good weekend, Jean? Stand still hanging back bedwise. I got that film out, you know, Michelle Thing, where they had that big sex scene and she stabs him in the head with a screwdriver. I thought it might put him in the mood. <laughs> but it didn't. Yeah. All he's interested in is the brand name of the flipping screwdriver. <laughs> Dolly, are you still on sugar? No, that was just till twelfth night. Sweetness. We're going for a meal Friday night. That might do the trick. Might well do. She'll be coming round the back. <laughs> is he in? El Sado. Fag break. Lucky. Any chance of a brew is perishing. Did you have a nice time at Jean's? Still can't quite get to grips with the physical side. I don't think she'd mind if you made a move. I'm sure she wouldn't. But I don't want to be a disappointment. Well, you didn't disappoint Bobby. <laughs> Morning, Stan. Dolly, Bobby was very straightforward. Jean might expect a bit more of a palaver. <laughs> Mantavani and lava lamps. <laughs> All right, Stan. Do us a brew, Brent. No, Christine. 
Just changed into that, have you? Do you want to know the truth? God, no. Oh, ha, ha, Jeremy, somebody. Jeremy, who? I don't know. I didn't get to bed till five o'clock. <laughs> Is she here, Christine? Oh, hello, Stan. Morning, Jean. Looking forward to Friday. <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you going to wear? Well, that's up to big boy. How do you feel about Basque, Stan? Well, they can't all be bombing car parks. <laughs> Say that. I'm so, so sorry I'm late. Don't worry. I set my alarm for five, but actually I had to pass water at ten two. <laughs> so that was a lovely example of the bladder cooperating with the psyche, wasn't it? <laughs> Right, OK. In fact, I was here 40 minutes ago, but a little cat had been run over just outside the main gates. So I felt I had to sit with it. It wasn't alive in any real sense. Its head was flat. <laughs> I have the gift of healing hands, and I just sat quite humbly, sending out waves of compassion and hopefully easing its journey into the world beyond. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm Tony. Probably remember from last week. And uh, you met Dolly, I think, didn't you? I did. You were so kind and warm. You still the fluttering of my anxious heart. Oh, I could tell you were nervous. You like me. You don't judge by appearances. No, oh, that's true. In fact, <laughs> your aura is amethyst. Oh. Mine's white. The next one up, we have a bond. Uh, and this is Jean? No, there's no spark there. <laughs> You're hardly showing an aura at all. You'll have to give it a bit more welly than that, Christine. You're very intrusive, aren't you, Jean? <laughs> this is the old country way, whisking towards the heart. And which silly old country person told you that? <laughs> Sorry, Jean, did I hurt you by my remark? I'm afraid I have no option but to voice the truth. I'm afraid I have no option but to take the... Thank you! <laughs> Someone's first day. What, in a wound are you covering Jean with your sarcasm? Oh, get stopped. <laughs> How are we doing? We're getting there. Blooming heck, Bran. Where's that smell coming from? I'll give you a clue out of Christine's bottom. <laughs> You all right, Christine? You have very warm hands. Do you have the gift of healing? Nope. Have you ever tried communicating with the other side? The other side of what? The counter? I've possibly panicked you, haven't I, by my reference to life after death. But just remember this. There are many paths to the light. Yeah, well, there are many ways to scramble eggs, but leaving them raw in the bowl isn't one of them. Are you all right, Stan? All right, I am not. We haven't weed in your rubber gloves again, have you? <laughs> that sort of thing happens with a hen party. I took it in good part. No, somebody's chucked a dead cat right outside reception. No. Right on the edge of the fountain. Anybody could have seen it. Ladies, vegetarians... I placed that precious carcass there. You did? First day at work and you're putting a dead cat in an ornamental fountain. What are you going to do with Friday? <laughs> Throttle a goat in the main car park. <laughs> now, I'm not squeamish. My dad was a desert rat. He couldn't afford to be squeamish. He saved a man's life with a tablespoon. <laughs> but eating eggs scrambled by a self-confessed cat carcass cuddler, I shall not be. Can I lay a hand on you? Do you, you mind? Lay no hand on me. <laughs> skip me, brew. I think he's a little confused. I think he's bloody wonderful. <laughs> Will you excuse me? Oh, God, is that Christine again? Yeah, that's the fourth one this morning. <laughs> oh, God, Brett, what's that? <laughs> I have a whiff of raw bacon, it takes the edge off it. <laughs> Who did it? Christine? Yeah, might be nerves, might be mushy peas. <laughs> No, that's my mug. Not that it matters in any way. There are no mugs on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> While we are still living, perhaps I could have it back. 
That's your coffee, Christine. Actually, Brenda, I think I won't have it. Why? I'm just sensing it's been made by exporting workers in the third world. <laughs> and I often find very cheap coffee can provoke an unscheduled bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling Christine about Anita and how she left the baby for Bren on the fire escape. Yeah. But don't mention it to her, though. I might have to, Brenda. Well, I might have to smash you in the face with a tin of beans. Then. <laughs> You're joking, of course. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. He just fell asleep just now. In the kitchen. Hello. <laughs> Who's that? That's Christine. And what's that smell? That's Christine as well. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm really well. I'm doing sit-ups every day. And I've got a hemorrhoid, but it's quite a dinky one. <laughs> well, you're looking really flat. Well, he was tucked right up under here. That's why he didn't show. And he was only five and a half pounds. So... Did you not know you were pregnant? Look, I can't really tell you properly here. No, of course you can't. But I'd just like to explain why I left him for you. I wasn't thinking straight. Look, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to hurt my family, so I thought, if I gave him to you... What, because I said I wished I'd had one? I just thought I could please everybody, but I had to have him back. Well, of course you had to have him back. Hey, how are you doing? You're looking great. I'm really well. Got away with just one little hemorrhoid. <laughs> Did you? My cousin had three big ones, sort of in a cluster. <laughs> I'm just having a fag. Are you and Tony still together? Yeah, we're absolutely together. Ah, oh, is it lovely? Well, it was lovely, yeah, but he doesn't want to work here anymore, so it's not looking that lovely at the minute. Can you really not have a baby? No, we can't. Well, I might, but he can't. He's not fertile. I'm really sorry. At least he's not that other thing. What other thing? It's quite a little bouncy sort of a word. dum de dum Trampoline? <laughs> Marzipan? <laughs> Confident? Impotent! <laughs> At least he's not impotent. <laughs> well, actually... Don't tell anybody, but he sort of is. It's just happened lately. What are you having? Tea? <laughs> You're going straight home, Dolly? We're going shopping. Mrs Hotpants is after a new outfit. <laughs> right, it's the big night. I want something that'll slim me down, come in handy and get Stan going. A mini skip? <laughs> Sweet, I'm crashing out. I'm going to Anita's. I've hold of the baby. Fill her in on Peppy Le Pew. Uh, I'm staying up wind of the trolley, I tell you. <laughs> Can I just say something? What? That the little bit of weight you carry isn't fat and it isn't water. It's all those negative, cynical attitudes gathered in solid form on your physical body. <laughs> and once you let those go, that little bit of weight will leave you and you'll finally connect to the aura within. <laughs> I think it stinks. And it's not the only thing. <laughs> See you, Brent. See ya. I'm sure there's a beautiful person in there somewhere, but so deeply hidden. Have you always been a bit thick, Christine, or did you have to do an evening class? <laughs> You're quite shallow, aren't you, Brenda? <laughs> no offence meant. No, but lots taken, thank you. I'm off, Brent. <laughs> no maintenance operative entering opposite gender toilet. <laughs> All right, Christine, are you taking the trolley round? Do you know where you're going? Well, I think I'll be able to sense where I'm going, actually. I'll be drawn to where refreshment is needed. Fair enough. Uh, I'm off to head office, Bren. Thank you so much, Anthony. They've lost another three contracts. No. Two places are closing the canteens down altogether. Flipping Can I just say that I really appreciate you taking the trouble to reassure me the way you just did when I know your own life's been touched by a tragedy? You can say what you like. See you later, Bren. See ya. <laughs> They're fighting back, though, head office. What? New uniforms. What? What like? Don't know, but if it's a dicky bow, I'm definitely out of here. Stanley, 
Don't call me that. My mother called me that. She was a marvellous woman. She could lift up a motorbike and sidecar one-handed. I feel we've somehow got up on the wrong foot. We have. And I wonder if it's not fear of sexual inadequacy that makes you so aggressive. Do you feel perhaps you have a small member? <laughs> I think we'll be the best of pals now. I think I should have smashed you in the face with a tin of beans when I first started. <laughs> Just turn me around. Hello. Golly, what is that? It smells like the elephant house. <laughs> Excuse me. Design first. Do you know what that is? Don't worry. I have an inner compass. Yeah, you could use an inner flipping deodorant. <laughs> ask you something, actually. It is a personnel type thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Time is louder. Go on. Um, this is from my mother's social worker. They reckon she can't live on her own anymore. In the caravan? Well, anywhere. They think she should live with me. That's ridiculous. What does Tony say? Well, I haven't asked him. I'm not here. I'm not here. Well, ask him now, Bren. <clears throat> Tony, what would you say if I had to have my mother to live with me? Bye. No, what would you say? That's what I'd say. Bye. That's a ludicrous idea. They obviously don't know that you're living with Tony. Yeah, but he wants to leave. Leave the canteen? Leave Manchester. He's, what's that word? Not toadstools. Disenchanted. <laughs> His friend that has the little pub in Scotland where we went to for Christmas, he wants to go there and maybe do meals and things. Well, wouldn't you like that? Well, he's not going to take me, is he? It's people like me he's trying to get away from. Anyway, the social worker's coming here on Friday to talk about my mother and everything. Did you not find design, then? Not as yet. Mm, go back that way, I'll catch you up. <laughs> Do you think I should have her to live with me once Tony's gone? Now, listen... Whiff a rama <laughs> Well done, well done. Is that totally trivial? Yes, yeah, the most money you can win on a daytime quiz or something. Mm. Nobody's won it yet. How are you feeling about tonight? Sleepy, my Jean. Apprehensive. Well, you did all right with Bobby. Bobby was very straightforward. She was very much your three items and straight to the quick checkout. Ren? Yeah? Don't worry about I've got plans for him tonight. <laughs> Oi, is it safe to come in? She hasn't dropped one lately. <laughs> Please, seeing as how you've never blooming made one. She won't have to pour the milk, it'll just guide itself into the cups. <laughs> Where's the baby? He's with Mum. Just wondered if there was any chance of me coming back to work. Just the mornings, maybe. Well, you could for me. But at the moment, I'm stuck with Niffy Nora, the Aura Explorer. <laughs> Come in and have a chat, anyway. Shall we go? Oh, I wonder if everyone would mind partaking of this particular brew. As a celebration of my first week with you all. Yes, why not? Oh, yes, why not? It's like Chamberlain coming back from Munich. <laughs> she only did it once, you know. Who? Anita. When she got pregnant? Yeah, don't you think that's crummy? Did she say who it was? Paul that I had a thing with. Paul the decorator? Yeah, in his van they did it. Paul Paul? Dark Paul? Yeah, did it once. They only did it once? In the back of his van on a dust sheet. On a dust sheet? Next to a lot of tins of emotion. Aww. Oh, listen, she wasn't being horrible, but she said something about you and Tony. Yeah? That he was like having a sort of a problem in bed. I couldn't get him before because of bloke and he comes in on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Viagra. They're really hard to get. You know what they are? Oh, yeah, they had one, Richard and Judy. They gave them to three couples, didn't they, and sent them to an hotel. And well, one, it didn't work. And one just went red in the face. And one, it worked before he got to the bedroom and he had an orgasm in a revolving door. <laughs> Bren? Yeah? Crisis. <laughs> that blithering social worker just called. My mother's? She was coming at six. She's coming now. Now? That's a typical sneaky social worker trick, actually. To wrong foot you. But you can't come now. I haven't got my head straight. Why are we waiting? Well, she's done it. To totally get you on the hop. Now, you think of some bloody good reasons why you don't want your mother to live with you. Get your brains onto it, Bren. I mean it. I'm in a bit of a muddle with my sugar. 
Who has sweeteners? Dolly has two. Do you want a hand? That social worker's just called. She's coming round now. Oh, tell her to bog off. We're stuck with one whiffy old head case at work. We don't want another one when we get home. <laughs> Finally. I don't have this mug. Oh, this is sugared. Mm. Where's Stan's? That was very vigorous mopping, Stan. Was it? You're perhaps using that mop as a symbol of your own virility, possibly. And with that thrusting movement, I wonder if you weren't so much mopping as sublimating. Very interesting. Well, seeing as I have no brew, perhaps you won't mind if I go and sublimate the third floor urinals. Of this one, mate. Are you sure this is my tea, Anita? I think so. I think I saw Christine put the sweeteners in it. Two. Two little blue ones in the tissue. <laughs> Sweetness are white and a little. What are the blue ones? <laughs> Viagra. <laughs> Christine, did you put Viagra in my tea? I think so. I've just taken a very powerful drug designed to combat male impotence. Is that the situation? <laughs> what will it do to a woman? Where will it go? <laughs> what will happen when it gets down there and finds there's nothing to pump? <laughs> It'll be like a Range Rover going top speed into a cul-de-sac. <laughs> It'll bounce back and head straight for my heart, won't it? I'll die of a heart attack. <laughs> what else will I get? Nose hair? <laughs> Am I going to start driving with one elbow out of the window? <laughs> Leaving the seat up? <laughs> Weeing at random, missing the ball altogether? <laughs> it won't do anything. Can I just say... No, I'm talking now. I don't know how long I've got, so I've nothing to lose. <laughs> the others were right about you, but I couldn't see it. You smell. <laughs> you make personal remarks. You mix your tin tomatoes up with your butter beans. You blow your nose on your tabard when you think nobody's looking. You've upset each and every one of us, but worst of all, you've made me fall out with my very dear friend, Jean. And I will never forgive you for that, you slimy, two-faced, flatulating bum <laughs> I wonder if this might be an appropriate time for me to leave. Oh, yeah. Push off and take your bum with you. <laughs> Back on board then, Anita. Oh, Do you want to start on Monday? Done, done. Dolly, you did good. Yeah, well said, Dolly. You know, I think that Viagra has put me in touch with my masculine side. <laughs> well, don't waste it. Run out before it wears off and loosen me wheel nuts. Let's <laughs> go make a proper brew. I wouldn't have minded some of that Viagra myself. Give me a boost for tonight. Oh, come on, it'll be great. It's sensitive male equipment. It's like a toaster with an intermittent fault. The light's on and then nothing pops up. <laughs> Is that your mug? Yeah. I've just worked it out then. Dolly didn't have that Viagra. Eh? You did. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's one of Christine's. It tastes horrible, actually. Bren, this is your mother's social worker, Mrs. Holcomb. Hi. Do you want to come through? I'll just be a minute, OK? That's fine. I'll get my papers sorted. Go on, Twink. They'll be dying of thirst in that conference room. Tell her to stuff it, Bren. Whatever she says, just tell her to stuff it. Go on, mate. Go on about. I don't know what I'm going to say. Just say no. Good luck. And don't let her get under your skin. Yeah, well, don't watch. You put me off. Do you reckon? Not bad, actually. Brent looks pretty cool, doesn't she? Fairly in control so far. What do you think? Not so good. She's sort of slumped down in the chair a bit, hasn't she, Brent? Can't get a word in, you see. That's how they do it, these blithering social workers. They wear you down. Just tell her, Brent. Tell her no. 
Oh, Flip. She's patting Bren's hand. That's very bad. Is it? Fatal. Empathy. Sympathy. Just like the Gestapo. Then whack! There you are, installing a stair lift. <laughs> Come on, Bren. You want to have a life with me, not your poxy mother, don't you? She's coming out. Get back! I'm taking the afternoon off. The bins come wait. I'm going round to Jean's. I don't know if it's psychological, but since I had that Viagra, I'm on top of the world. I feel I could make love for 12 hours, or has every wheelie bin in this factory and still have enough gumption to rust-proof the underside of two wheelbarrows? <laughs> have a fantastic weekend. I love you. Brent told me you're probably leaving. So I suppose she thinks she may as well look after Petula. Well, I'm not going anywhere without Bren, am I? I don't think it occurred to her that you'd want her with you. Well, of course I do. For God's sake, it's taken us nearly eight years to get together. Well, I don't think she knows how you feel. Well, she's a daft bat then, isn't she, dozy cow? <laughs> do you love her? Yeah. Have you ever told her? No. Well, thank you very much for the use of your office. I'm sorry I had to change the time. Bye. Well, well, it was like you said. She just had me every flipping which way. She was nice, she was kind, she was sympathetic, she was funny. I mean, not carry on camping, but, you know, funny for a social worker. <laughs> and I just couldn't fight her off. It was like the European Cup. It was like she was Bayern Munich and I was Manchester United. I just couldn't keep them out of the back of the net. She just kept them coming and I just thought, I can't do this. And she knows she's won and I know she's won and the Germans are cheering. Go on. <laughs> well, it gets too much and I have to come out for a drink. And I'm crying, I know, third time in eight years, not good. And I'm drinking this old tea, and in comes Stan, and he's had that Viagra, he thinks, and he's off to have sex with Jean, and he's obviously feeling wonderful. And do you know what he does? He gives me a hug, and he says he loves me. Well, you know, not a lot of people have ever said they love me. Well, only sort of drunk people, just before they threw up, usually. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm in love, actually, and I want to say it. And I think, well, whatever happens with my mother and everything, I'm going to say it. That I love you. Because I do. Oh, brain. So what did you tell her? Well, I went back in, and she's looking away from the goal then, isn't she? She's all ready to swap jerseys, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think, there's old Stan, raring to get his knickers off with Jean just because he thinks he's had that Viagra, and he hasn't at all. And I just think, I'm not having this. Do I want my mother to live with me? No! Whap! Straight in the back of the neck, Teddy Sheringham. <laughs> Why don't I want her to live with me? Because I don't! Whap, that's it, it's all over. The Germans are stunned, they can't believe it. Little blank faces all around the stadium. Man, you told her to stuff it. I did, I told her to stuff it. Sorry, but because Stan said he loved you? No, because he thought he could do anything because he'd had the Viagra. But he hadn't. No! And I thought, well, if it gives you that much bottle when you haven't had it, what will it do for you when you have? Well, who had it then? I did, just now. <laughs> Shall we get some more? <laughs>